Scotland and Japan go together like peanut butter and jelly, mac and cheese. Is it even possible to think of one without the other? Name a more dynamic duo. Go ahead, I'll wait. For those of you who don't know, my husband and I have moved from America to Scotland and now we're living in Japan. And there are a few things we've noticed already in our first month or so in Japan that Scotland seemed to prepare us for Japan with. And I wanted to share those with you. Number one, queues. I've mentioned this in other videos, but the UK is very serious about queuing. Or for Americans, standing in line. And I didn't think that we would find a country that really loved queuing much more than the UK does until we moved to Japan. I would dare say that Japan actually takes their cues more seriously than the UK. <gasps> Whoa. Number two, the toilets are separate from the bathrooms. In the US, we have our toilets in the same room as the bathrooms, showers, and the sinks. In Edinburgh, our flat had a toilet and a sink in a separate room, and then down the hall was another room with the bathroom, the shower, and another sink. Here in Japan, they even take it to another level. They have the toilet in one room with a very small sink on the back of the toilet and then another room with a bathtub and a shower in the same room and then the sink in a whole different location with a vanity and everything. So yeah, wow. Number three smaller living space. The US has a lot of space. It's a big country. This has naturally led to building bigger houses. Even our apartments are much larger in the US than in Edinburgh. But now that we're in Japan, our apartments are even smaller than in Edinburgh. Luckily, since we had to move from one place to the other, we don't have as much stuff as we did in the US. This isn't to say that there aren't small living spaces in the US as well. Just Google studio apartments in New York City, for example. We had to adapt, however, now living here in Japan, we have even less stuff and even less space. Number four, no driving, walking everywhere. In the US, pretty much everyone has a car. Because it's a larger country, you have to drive to get from point A to point B, and we don't have good public transportation. In Europe, however, the public transportation was amazing. And since we were living in the main city, we didn't have any cars. We would just take the bus pretty much everywhere. Or walk, actually. Edinburgh is an incredibly walkable city, and we lost some weight from that, which is cool. Here in Japan, I actually don't have a car because I don't have my license, but luckily enough, there's a big bike culture. So I ride my bike to and from school where I work as an English teacher. Number five, no doggy bags. This is something that I actually really miss from the US. In the US, you get a lot of food at restaurants. You have really big portions, and I'm not that big of a person and I can't eat that much. So I loved leftovers. I would order something, I would eat it, and then I would have probably half of it to have as another meal later on to microwave when I get home. And it was always delicious. <sighs> In most of the rest of the world, if you can't finish your meal at the restaurant, then that's it. You don't get to take it home, you don't have leftovers, and usually they toss it out, which I find kind of wasteful and it makes me a little bit sad. But they don't have doggy bags in Edinburgh and Scotland and most of Europe, in Australia and Japan, a lot of places. Now, it is worth noting that a lot of the portion sizes are much smaller here in Japan, but I still have a hard time finishing everything in one meal. Number six, less of a tipping culture. In the US, servers rely on their tips. Most of them, if you watched my video about working in the US, receive absolutely nothing once taxes are taken out. So their checks literally say zero dollars and zero cents. In the US, I always tipped a minimum 20%. In Edinburgh, most people would just kind of leave the change, and if the service is really great, they would leave a between 5 and 10% tip on average, but no more than that. Here in Japan, no one tips whatsoever. It's actually considered rude and insulting to tip. It's as if you're insinuating that they need more money. 
so don't do it. They actually believe it's insulting. Number seven, coins have value. In the US, most people would have maybe a change jar at home where they buy something throughout the day, they get changed, they toss it in the jar at the end of the day, and that becomes a fund for maybe something special that they have planned. But we don't often use our change on a day-to-day -day basis, and we didn't have coin purses or anything like that. In the UK, however, there were certain coins that were worth a lot of money, and we use them regularly, whether it be pound coins or two pound coins. Japan even takes this to another level. They have coins that are 100 yen, which is about a dollar, but then they also have a coin that's 500 yen, almost $5 in one coin. That is not a coin that you want to lose. So that's my list. Who knew that Scotland would actually prepare us for Japan? Were you surprised by any of this? Please comment below and let me know. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Your support means a lot. And if you really liked this video, please subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.